Today I'm going to show you how to create your own abstract paintings. All we're really going to do is play with paint and paper. So don't get too carried away with your expectations. Assemble some tools, some paint and some paper are really all you need. And you can probably pick up some mark making tools around your house. We can go through that in a minute. Just be sure the paper you get is watercolor paper or suitable for fairly wet media. So you can always grab a couple of hotel key cards or gift cards and you can turn them into your own um, catalyst wedges like I am doing here just by simply using some scissors to cut some shapes into these cards. You, there's so many things that you can do. Let your imagination go crazy. You can also try to come up with some tools around the house, a plastic fork, a skewer, chopstick, a straw, maybe a toothbrush, a couple of other brushes, and maybe some plastic palette knives. And now I'm just looking at the color wheel pretty, pretty quickly here just to pick out the colors that I like. Typically, it's easier for beginners if you stay in the co same color family. Like I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use blues, greens, purples, and then I'll probably throw in a pink in there, but um, you can choose your favorite colors. Ideally, you'll want to let each layer dry before you add another color. So tape down your paper, and then simply start with one color, and add it to your paper wherever you want want to don't overthink it okay just you're just making marks all i really want you to do is keep the paint at a fairly um, thin layer that way it dries faster if you have thick goopy layers it's going to take forever for it to dry and when you use wet on wet with different colors you run the risk of having a brown or muddied looking color so the next thing i was going to do is use a light blue i'm just mixing uh, them together not really together but <laughs> using the one tool just to add these marks these sort of scraping marks and again, I'm not trying to get too concerned about what does this look like? All I'm doing is putting color down in as different a way as I can think of for each layer. Now here I did want to add in another color, a red. Um, I was trying to make it pink and it ended up being kind of a salmon color or a coral color. It was a bit dull for my taste, but I went with it and just scraped it on and used a little plastic palette knife just to add it to the paper. Don't forget to change the direction of the paper. That sometimes can help you. You don't want to get, again, too tied into exactly what you're looking at at this moment. So I turned the board and I got out a richer blue and decided to add that with another tool. You don't have to cover every single part of the paper. Okay, I turned the board again. And what you don't see is I am letting this dry a little bit and I test it just before I add the next color. I'm gonna go in with the green. And I really liked the contrast of that green. It's just a bright color. And yeah, you know, you can go over other colors once they're dry. And often if the color is translucent, you'll see a little bit of that other color that you had before. What you don't see outside is that I'm using the skewer to make little dots.
I know this is a long video, so I appreciate it if you're painting along with me. Don't forget, you can always put it on pause and catch up. You can try to do exactly what I'm doing, or, you know, just do something that you enjoy doing. There I was using the straw to add some red circles. I just wanted, that pink was just not sitting well with me, so I was just trying something else. Also decided to use a fork to make some dots, I think. Yes, and turn the board around again. Get a different perspective if you can. Oh, one thing you can do, if there's bits that you don't enjoy, take some white and add a thin coat of white over it. It just helps to dilute what you're seeing a little. And you can always go over with another color. I wasn't loving either one of these at this point, and I started to give up and thought, ah, now's the perfect time to keep going, right? Because what have you got to lose? Just a little bit of paint, a little bit of paper. So because I like that purple, I decided to bring that in again. Turned around the board and thought maybe I could use a different color pink and brighten that up. Did a little, not much. I added it to the top one. I'm creating two pieces here. That's why I have the tape going across the middle of that paper. And here I'm using the fork to add some white dots to this shape that's starting to look like a flower to me, a little bit of a flower. Again, just using dots and playing around and seeing what happens. By the way, you know, paint when it dries looks completely different. So definitely take your time. This, these two paintings took me a couple hours to do, even though I have it at 14 minutes in this video, obviously I speeded it up but it's always letting it dry, coming back, looking at it, adding another bit, adding another little layer. Allowing myself to not get upset with what I'm seeing, if it's not coming out the way I want to or if it's not as pretty as I think it should be, it's okay. I always remind myself it's just paper. It's just a little bit of paint. What I'm trying to do is just relax into creating because you know what guys? I think that's what we're born to do is be creative. And it doesn't have to be with paint, right? We know that we can be creative in so many different ways that many people may not even consider creative, like cooking or gardening or um, knitting or sewing. Those things could be called hobbies or crafting, but it's all being creative. We're not talking about fine art. We're not talking about realism. And we're not even really talking about abstract, although I would call this abstract. Hey, this is the fun part, the reveal, right? So after you're done and you've applied as much paint as you want to, let it dry completely and then carefully peel off your tape to reveal your two paintings. Once the tape comes off, you might be surprised and might be a lot happier at what you see than before you took the paint off. And you know what? Turn it around and see which way you like it. And what I always end up doing is cutting the two pieces, or four pieces in some cases, in half. 
Um, you could also like take it and cut it into strips and make bookmarks. So what I decided to do was cut these two pieces. And once you separate, you're gonna get yet another perspective. Now often, after something is very dry, I'll pull out my paint pens and start embellishing with that. And that's no different. I decided to use a white Posca pen and a gold Posca pen. Oh, by the way, see how you could make bookmarks or smaller paintings? Really fun. Just a creative little exercise. Find a couple of pins you enjoy. Maybe it's just one, maybe it's two or three. And start playing around. In almost every painting I do, I end up adding gold. So here, I just decided to start tracing the shapes in gold. Also added some little gold spirals. And then I circled all the little dots I made in gold. By the way, this isn't a gold Posca pen. This is a gold gel pen that I'm using. It was kind of tedious to circle every dot, but it's also kind of fun and relaxing. And hey, what I've decided to do is give away these two pieces to anyone that's watching this video. You don't have to be a subscriber, though I would love it if you are. It would really help me if you would subscribe. But if, you, if that's not your thing and you still want a painting, that's fine too. All you need to do is comment below. It would be great if you'd give me a thumbs up. You know, just comment below. Anybody that comments, I will put your name into a drawing and then I will contact you if I pull your name. Thanks for watching, you guys. See you on the next one. Bye.